from cannons and arrows in the ancient times to basketball and rockets in the modern age, projectile motion is what explains this kind of movement. And this is what we're going to discuss in this episode of the Classical Mechanics mini-series. So what is projectile motion? Projectile motion is the motion of an object or particle that is thrown near the Earth's object and follows a curved path due to the action of the gravity only. In order to understand the projectile motion, we must use what we have learned in the three previous episodes. If you have missed any of our previous videos, you can watch the playlist of the Classical Mechanics mini-series. Links are in the description and in the YouTube card above. We will start analyzing the projectile motion by making the graph of the projectile motion. We will do the axis, the y axis and the x axis. Then we are going to do the motion of the, pro of the object. It starts with an angle and a starting velocity and then goes to a certain height and then falls again down to the ground. Now we're going to picture the starting velocity and then we're going to analyze it to the two axes, the starting velocity of the x-axis and the starting velocity of the y-axis. And the angle of the starting velocity with the x-axis is called thi. Now we're going to find out the velocity and the vector of distance in a random position of the object. This is the vector of velocity. And now we're going to make the vector of distance for a random position. And that's the graph of the projectile motion. Now we're going to find the equations of speed and distance. First of all, we're going to start with the definition of acceleration. We know that acceleration is due to the force of gravity. And that's why it's J. And because it's against the movement, we have the minus. And then we're going to do the process that we did in the, our first video to find out the starting velocity and the velocity equations of projectile motion. As you can see, the integral of the speed, we use the initial conditions and now it's not zero because it has an initial starting velocity.
and we will name this equation one the first equation we're going to understand how much is the vector of the initial velocity it's the initial velocity in the x-axis and the initial velocity in y-axis the initial velocity in each axis can be derived by the Pythagoras theorem and we call this equation 2 so the first equation due to the second equation gives us that the vector And that's the equation for the speed in projectile motion. Now we have the equation of speed. We can find out the equation for the distance. First of all, we start with the definition of the speed, of speed because it's the change in distance over time. And we'll do the starting process we did in the first video in order to find the equation of distance And now we are taking the previous equation that we found about speed and putting it into the integral. Because we know that it's the it's zero because it starts in the zero And now we have the equation for the distance. Now that we have the equations for speed and distance of the projectile motion, we're going to find out two important key features. 
First of all, it's the total height, the maximum height, the object is going to reach. And we can show it in the graph like this. Second of all, we're going to find out the total distance in the x-axis that is going to cover the object. And we can show it in the graph here. The first part of the equation of distance is the distance in the x-axis and the second part is the distance in the y-axis. Now we are going to write down the equation of speed of the projectile motion because we are going to need it. Here is the speed. This is the speed of the x-axis and this is the speed of the object in the y-axis. Now, the maximum height of the object is reached when the speed in the y axis is zero. Now we're going to take from the equation of speed that the axis uh, speed in the y axis is zero and we're going to find the time in which that speed goes to zero. And that's the time that the speed in the y-axis goes to zero. Now we can say that the maximum height that the object is going to reach is the distance in the y-axis when the speed goes to zero. And we're going to put the time that the, the speed in the y-axis goes to zero in the equations for the distance in the y-axis and this will give us the maximum height And this is the total maximum 
height the object is going to reach. To find the total distance that the object has traveled, we know that this happens when the object in the y-axis is in the point zero. So we're going to take from the equation of the distance, we're going to take the equations for the distance in the y-axis and we're going to make it zero to find out which in which time this happens. And this is the time in which the object in the y-axis is in the zero place. Now that we know the time in which the object is in the y-axis in the zero place, we're going to take it and put it in the equation about the distance in the x-axis and we're going to find the maximum distance. And this is the total distance that the object is going I to come. I hope you find this video very interesting. If you did, consider subscribing to our channel, like and comment and even share this video. You can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter for more content every week. Links are in the description below. Thanks again for your support and see you in the next episode of a journey into physics.